Smart genealogy. Don't you want to be a smart genealogist? Who doesn't? We all need to be smarter in everything that we do, but particularly in genealogy. I'm Amy Cross, and today I am going to tell you all of the things you need to be doing to be a smart genealogist. I cannot tell you how many times in the last couple of months that I have read in a Genealogy Society publication or in some other way, a genealogist who has decades of experience and all of a sudden discovers that they made a mistake in their family tree, they had the wrong person there, or maybe they broke through a brick wall, all because they found a detail that they had not noticed before. They did something that wasn't so smart and it stopped them from finding the truth in their family tree. So you do not wanna do that. Although let's be real, we all kind of do that a little bit, right? We all make dumb mistakes. We all sometimes aren't so smart. And as you research, you're gonna have times when you do make mistakes. But these 10 tips are going to help you be a smart genealogist. And your research is going to take off. A smart genealogist, one, documents their sources. They cite the information that they have gathered so that when they come back to it, they know how they found it because you want to be able to find it again. You might need to go back there and you not might not remember. I hate to say it, but you might not remember. So you need to document your sources. The second thing that you wanna do is you gotta keep track of it somehow. Krista Cowan of Ancestry keeps track of her research in the notes section on Ancestry. Connie Knox of Genealogy TV advocates using a research document. It doesn't really matter what you do, but you have to keep track of the information that you've gathered and you need to have some notes on what you've done and what you need to do next. Three is timelines. I cannot stress enough the importance of timelines. Timelines help you recognize errors. It helps you identify things that may not be right in your tree. It helps you recognize something doesn't fit. Number four is notice the details. This may not be number four. This should maybe should be number one. But a smart genealogist looks at the images, absorbs all of the information that's in them, maybe even transcribes the document, pays attention to all those little facts, occupations, who were the other bondsmen, who were the other witnesses, just every little obscure thing that could be in there may be something that makes a difference in your research. And more often than not, when people make a mistake, it's because they missed a crucial detail. And later they go back to their research and they see something that they didn't catch before and it makes all the difference in the world. They either recognize they have the wrong guy in their tree or it helps them overcome a brick wall. So look at those documents and pay attention to the detail. Number five is researching all of the children. I cannot tell you how often people that I talk to don't do this. Research all the children and let me tell you why. You wanna research all the children because sometimes, even though they're not your direct ancestor, they may give you clues about your direct ancestor. They may have records on their parents or grandparents that your direct ancestor doesn't have. And people who don't look at the other children oftentimes are missing a ton of good stuff. So research the other children. And number six is watching for possible duplicates. Other people that may be getting confused. Now this happens often in naming patterns. A lot of times in some cultures, people would name their child after their father. Well, if the father had five sons and all of them named one of their kids after their dad, you could have a lot of people in the same community by the same name and people get confused. Other times there may just be somebody else by the same name, even if it's unusual. So you want to be always keeping an eye out for people that may have the same name and may even have the same birth date. I had that happen for a client. Two people had been confused. They were born around the same time and it wasn't until we totally like mapped out their whole lives, each of these two individual lives, we recognized that they couldn't be the same person. They were separate individuals. So be watching for those conflicts. And that takes me right into seven. Look for conflicts, don't ignore them. If you see a conflict, it's a warning flag, don't ignore it. You wanna be paying attention to it. You don't wanna say, oh, well, just whatever. You don't need to freak out about every little thing like in census records, obviously, we sometimes had names listed differently. Maybe sometimes they were called by their first name in a census record and then later by a middle name 
or maybe the spellings differed. You need to be looking at those things though to just make sure. Like if you have a first name and then a middle name, you need to make sure that you've got the right family. You need to make sure that that is the correct census record for that family. Whenever you have a warning sign, whenever you have some kind of conflict come up, you've got to resolve it so that you know that you're not making a mistake. Don't ignore them. Number eight is don't stay on one site. Too many people do that. Maybe you love ancestry or you love find my past or you love my heritage or you love family search. Don't just stay right there. You wanna be looking outside you. You wanna be looking for other places where you can find sources, where you can find documents, where you can find more information. You can look at newspapers. You can look at state and local archives. There's so many different places that you can go now and so many of them are becoming digitized. Don't ignore other options for research. Huge mistake. Smart genealogists don't do that. Number nine is smart genealogists are smart. They keep working on getting smarter. If you wanna do smart genealogy, you gotta increase the knowledge all the time. Records are constantly coming out. There are increases right now exponentially in record groups. Things are becoming available online that were not available before. Things are turning up that were not available before because of the interest in genealogy. Plus, maybe you're doing research and your research is taking you into a new county or a new state or a new country. You need to learn about that area. You need to learn about what happened then and, and why might something have happened to your ancestor. You need to learn about what record groups you might find in that particular area. Maybe your ancestor served in the Revolutionary War or the Civil War. You need to learn more about the people that served there from your location in that regiment, what record groups could apply. Keep learning, there is always something more to learn. I say this all the time. The more you know, the more you know you don't know, especially in genealogy. And then finally, don't accept other people's trees. You might wanna look at them, but please don't accept that information. There's way too many trees out there that are wrong. Whether you're looking at the family search group tree or whether you're looking at individual trees on ancestry or find my past or my heritage, there are a ton of them that are wrong. So I see way too often people build their trees solely on that information. That is not smart genealogy. Don't do that. These 10 tips are going to help you be a smarter genealogist. So get on out there, do some smart genealogy, subscribe to my channel, and that way you'll have more hints and tips on how to be a smart genealogist. And have a great day.